John Mendez and we're just going to do a little introduction to how to set your plotter up. We've been very lucky to be given a brand new uh, Raymarine plotter on a little uh, Botnia Targa supplied by Wessex Marine and we're in the sunny harbour of Poole which is lovely for this so uh, very nice. When you're setting a plotter up obviously we've got a new out the box brand new sparkly version it's the same principle with all of them, even the small standalone units, they all have pretty much the same features in. The posher ones do have more features, but it's the basic settings that you really need to get right to make sure that you're comfortable and that you know that the information it's giving you is what you want to be looking at. So all I've done so far is just turn it on. Now this is one of these combined hybrid touch, does everything. What we're really interested in is the plotter side of it. So. We're going to do a couple of videos for you about other settings that you can have, but this is just about basic setup. So we're going to put it into chart mode and just set the chart so that we're comfortable with the information it's giving us. So when you look at it, um, depending on what chip you've put in, most units now come with a base map, which is of some use, but the little warning when you turn the plotter on saying not for use for navigation or only to be used as an aid, it's very true, so you need to have an idea of what you're looking at, the accuracy and the detail given. So this one's had a chip put in on top of the base map and that gives us a little bit more detail on depth and things of that nature. So once we've had a basic look, we can see we've got a fairly basic looking chart. If we zoom in a bit, are we getting much? And you can see as we zoom in, we're starting to get some little numbers up here and they're giving us some depths and things of that nature. So once you've got your plotter turned on, this one's got lots of options, charts, radars, dashboards, fish finders. We're just going to look at the basic settings first, the how to get you started and so you know what you're looking at. First thing you need to find is some form of settings. It's usually in some form of menu and that allows you to actually think about what information you want to see in their basic form. You can see here we've got boat details, units, all those sorts of things. Boat details, when the boat's been put together, if this was installed as standard kit, they will probably put some of this in for you. If not, you can go in here and you can choose the maximum and minimum heights that you want above and below. So you can think about those sorts of things, number of engines and batteries, not too worried about that. Units though are very important. So for me, we're in a nautical world. So we want to turn it into nautical miles, not kilometers. We want our speed in knots and we want to put our depth in meters. And the reason for that is our charts that we use are all in those same nautical units. So we want to have com com continuity between what we're looking at in our paper world and what we're looking at in our electronic world. Those are the three key ones for me. What's the distance, what's the speed and what's the depth. You can choose other things and depending on what you've got on the boat, do you need them or not? How the date format is done, how you have bearings done. I personally like bearings done in true and you can also set up any variation. This is set in an auto mode. Depending where you are in the world, you might need to put it into a manual mode and enter each year the variation. So with any headings that you get are correct. Other things, depending if you've got wind instruments or pressures or whatever, you can choose there. But the most important one here is that we choose the right datum. So over here, we've got system datum and this is in WGS84. And again, we're doing that so it's the same as our charts. So if you're operating in an area where you had old charts, ED50 or OGB36, you want to make the datum on the plotter the same as the charts. It's not such an issue now. Most charts are WGS84, but again, crucial bit of information. Know what you're looking at. Having got our settings organized, which are our baseline settings, we now need to look at what we want to have on the chart and how we want it displayed. So when we go into charts, it pops up. Now, I played with this a little bit earlier just to make sure I was aware of how the system worked. And I've asked for some data boxes on this. I've got the course over the ground, the speed over the ground, and the depth. And I was asked to do those for this particular customer. If it was mine, I'd also have the lat and long displayed as well, all the time. Because otherwise, I've got to go into the system to find the lat and long. And that's a really crucial thing for any Mayday situation or just generally where are you. So as a personal preference, I have lat and long as well, but these were asked for, so we've already done those. When you turn it on and we're in the chart mode, this is one of these hybrid touch, so I can either play with fingers or I can use the cursor and the zoom buttons to move in and out. When we look at it, it's displaying the information in a very familiar 
format. It's an Admiralty chart style. So land is buff coloured, what we call drying heights or intertidal area. So between the lowest astronomical tide and the high water mark is done in green. And then depths are done progressively, light, uh, big upon dark blue, becoming lighter, going to white for shallow to deep water. If you have an in-ray chart, which I have one right here, it's the other way around. Land is in green, um, drying heights are in yellow, and water starts as white and gets progressively bluer as it gets deeper. So if you're using in-ray charts and a plotter, you need to be careful about what you're interpreting. The massive advantage of plotters is the ease with which one can zoom in and out and examine things in greater detail. However, that's also their undoing. Once you start to zoom out a little bit, we lose a lot of the detail which is on a chart naturally because the chart can't uh, show you anything other than what's on it. It's all in that detailed form all the time. But the problem with the plotter is we zoom out to a reasonable size to look at it and we lose an awful lot of the background information. So we have to be really careful to understand what we're seeing. However, as we start to zoom in, we start to see the same information that's on the chart. So our depths and we see all the individual marks and if you go in further, you'll see their names. And if you touch on them, you can get information like what their characteristics and are. On some plotters, you have to use the mouse and the cursor to actually get to that. And then you would press enter and it would bring the information up. It doesn't matter how you find it, but it's good to know what you actually have. Having had a brief look at what you've got, it's then good to be able to interpret it so you know exactly what's available to you. So I've just touched up on one of the soft menus. Again, you might have buttons, this has both. And it's got various things on there. Key things to learn are how to do fine ship. That puts the cursor, if you've moved it, back on the boat. And that's really important. Another one that's good to find is go to or go. If you put a waypoint, how do you make the boat go there? Or what is its bearing and direction? Another crucial bit of information. I'll do routes and things separately, but we also want to look at these settings. And the things we want to look at is we've got options here as layers, depths, views and motions, and advance. And depending what your company has organized, you can see what's there. From our point of view, we can look at the layers and all plotters allow you to choose. Do you want the chart detail in low, medium or high? Again, very much personal taste. I find high means the whole thing is crammed with information. I find it very hard to pick out what I want. Most of them, as you zoom in, things appear in layers. But if you have it all on there all the time, it ends up looking very cluttered and confusing. Again, have a play and choose. This one has the ability to overlay the radar or not, and some other little bits. You can have community edits and things like that. I'm not a great fan of community edits. I prefer things to come through the chart agents and I can see correctly what's happening. Depths on our plotter. We can show all the soundings, which means all the little numbers. And they're always measured from chart datum measuring downwards. Chart datum being the lowest level of tide that we should experience. Can go below it, exceptional weather, but just be aware that it's normally measuring downwards. This is showing all the soundings. Now you might only want the soundings from naught to 20 meters. If it's over 20 meters, it doesn't really matter how big it, how deep it is in a small boat. We're not in a liner. So again, choose the information that you want to have. You can have the contours. Now the contours are really crucial. They choose where you go. Lots of contours close together means the depth's changing rapidly and that on a windy day might be really rough water. And you can also choose how far the contours are shown. We're showing a contour depth up to 20 meters here, which is pretty reasonable for us. Again, beyond 20 meters, it's not making a massive difference to us. We can on some units choose how the deeper water color is shown, whether it's white or some form of blue. And we can also choose a set shallow depth as well. Do we want to have a line beyond which it goes white straight away? Some people choose five meters because if it's over five meters in a small boat, there's no depth issue for you. But I prefer to have it a little bit deeper to allow me to assess how quickly the depth is changing. Most charts have an option of how you want it to be displayed. You can normally choose between relative and true motion, depending on the inputs. But the orientation is something that you really want to consider. Now, for most people, uh, of my age, north up is our preferred way around. We like it as the chart. So north remains at the top of the screen, same as it doesn't remain at the top of the chart. It's by far the easiest orientation to have for planning. However, I've become 
a slight convert to head up, which allows the chart to be going in the same way as the boat is. So if we were going east, the chart would have east at the top. The advantage of that is things appear on the chart the same as they are appearing on the boat. So anything that's on the port side on the chart is on the port side on the boat. Whereas if you're in north up, it won't always come across in that manner. You have to think about the orientation of the chart. Once you get used to it, it's really good. So do have a little play with both. I recommend north up for your planning mode, much simpler. Other things are specific to plotters. Advanced in this one allows us to choose do we want radar and AIS and all of them sorts of things. Not too crucial to us. And lastly, page settings on this allows us to put that information in so you can put your speed over the ground or the course over the ground. Some of them have it as a ribbon along the top, some of them put it over the chart. Once you've got all of that information in front of you, you can then work out how your plotter works. There's only a couple of things that you really need to know. One is that when you touch and hold, what pops up? Well, the key thing is that it gives a bearing and a distance to that place you pushed. So if I push here, for example, and let go, come on, work, there we go. It's telling me that that is on a bearing of 260, 2.14 nautical miles from where I currently am. And that's a great bit of information. So whether it's done by the cursor or whether it's done by touch, knowing how to find bearing and distance to something is crucial particularly on a rough day and you're thinking, how far is it to the harbour? If you can just push your cursor and find another three miles to go, really helpful and it's giving you the bearing to steer. The last thing you want to be able to do is find out how to put waypoints in. Waypoints are just imaginary spots on the surface of the earth that you choose where to place. You can get them from uh, Almanac or off the chart. And if you have a selection of waypoints, you can make them into a route, which is just like doing dot to dot. So on this one, we can either use the menu or we can just touch, and it gives us the ability to do a waypoint, or even build a route directly from the screen. And that's just joining the waypoints up, making the waypoints as you go. Both are great, both are very, very simple. Uh, find out how to do that on yours as well. And then you've got the basics for how to you use your plotter safely.